Wow, what a beautiful Sunday morning this is. You're welcome to another Gateway Online experience today, being the second Sunday in the month of August. For everything that is remarkable, God has been the one responsible. Wherever you are right now, I want you to begin to appreciate God for the privilege of being among the living. David said, I slept and I woke because the Lord sustained me. Wherever you are right now, I want you to begin to appreciate him with your hands lifted. Begin to thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for the breath in your nostrils. Thank him for your business, for your career. Thank him for the increase you have experienced. Even since the beginning of this month for your going out and your coming in. Appreciate the Lord Jesus. Thank him. Thank him. The Bible says to thank him. Oh, the Bible says to give him the praise. Oh, come on. Let's do that this moment. Appreciate Appreciating for the things that he has done, for every goodness you have experienced, even for the details that you have experienced. Thank him. Since the beginning of this year, God has been the one watching over you, over your household. Appreciate him and thank him. Thank him for the gift oh, of knowing him, for his Holy Spirit that resides even on the inside of you, guiding you and leading you all the way. Thank him and thank him and bless his name. Oh, Oh, Father, we say thank you. Thank we you. thank you because we have come this far and thank made it this far because you have been the one that has been leading us all the way. For that, we say thank you. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. For in Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. We give you the glory and we give you the praise for the privilege of giving us even to see another beautiful Sunday morning. We thank you because of the good things that you have done in our lives we look into every area of our lives and we see your signature and your handwriting we thank you father because even though what we experience in the immediate might not look at or seem as if you are at work we thank you because your word tells us in romans 8 that you are able to make all things to work together for our good we thank you father because you have been the one making everything to work together even for our own good and father for that we say thank you, thank you. and father i lift up everyone this morning before you and i ask that you will speak to everyone in the language that they'll be able to understand and put to work in the name of jesus Amen. as a result of our experience and your presence let it be evident unto all that we have come in contact with your word Amen. and also with your presence Amen. we give you the thanks and we give you the praise for in jesus name we have prayed Amen. Amen. wherever you are right now provided you are not driving i want you to celebrate the lord jesus come on and put your hands together and celebrate him give him a shout Woo! hallelujah glory to god hallelujah. what a beautiful sunday morning this is how do i know it's a beautiful sunday morning any day above ground is a beautiful day you see when you say good morning it's not just a greeting it is a prophecy you are simply saying into the day that it's gonna be a good day so i don't know who is sitting around you i want you to say to them good morning great morning amazing morning hallelujah it's gonna Amen. be that to you and to all yours in jesus name Amen. i pray for you that this week will be a week of testimonies Amen. it will be a week of elevation Amen. it will be a week of precision Amen. for you and all yours in the name of jesus Amen. this week you will know what to do Amen. this week there will be no confusion in Amen. your steps in the name of jesus Amen. so we started a discourse last week sunday on how to survive financial tough times and i want to believe you are part of the midweek recharge experience on Wednesday. What a word that is. What a word that is. I honestly hope that you have put to work the things you learned, those three steps. In case you missed that service, I would encourage you to go back and watch it on YouTube and on Facebook. Wherever it is you're watching this from, whether you're watching on YouTube or watching on Facebook, I want you to subscribe right now on YouTube and turn on notifications. And also, if you're watching on Facebook, ensure you like and you follow the page and also ensure you turn on the notification and also share this service so that other people can be a partaker of the experiences that you have been having on these platforms amen, amen. 
Amen. So we start that discourse on how to survive financial tough times, and we've established the fact that there is always going to be a financial tough time in the history of mankind. You see, last week we spoke extensively about you know how these are signals to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and why it is imperative that if you've not started a relationship with God through the person of His Son Jesus the Christ, that that is the most important decision you can ever make in your life you see christianity is not a religion i'm going to say that over and over again until people catch on to it i know when you have to fill some forms maybe you know you are required to fill in your religion they ask what is your religion and you have um, islam you have christianity you have traditional and you have other things you know you have new age you know that's a religion now human beings keep coming up with religions and that is why they think christianity is not a religion but christianity is more than a religion it is a relationship between divinity and humanity it is god reaching out to man you see when god made man he made man to fellowship with man that's what the bible tells us in genesis that in the cool of the day god will come to the garden of eden you know to fellowship with adam and with eve and one of the things that happened was when man fell right man lost that fellowship with the father so when jesus came one of the things he came to restore was to restore man back to that fellowship with the father so christianity is not a religion it is a relationship between the father and his sons and daughters hallelujah so we've also established the fact that a financial tough time right it has always been experienced throughout history it has been called different names depending on the time and the season it was experienced and our anchor text right is from isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 to verse 2 and verse 5 and i'm going to be reading from the amplified version if you don't uh, uh, if you have a bible i'd encourage you to open to it right now if you don't have a bible just ensure you listen attentively the bible says arise from spiritual depression to a new life it says shine be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the lord it says for your light has come and the glory and brilliance of the lord has risen upon you it says for in fact darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness will cover the peoples it says but the lord will arise upon you and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you it says then you will see and be radiant and your heart will tremble with joy and rejoice because the abundant wealth of the seas will be brought to you the wealth of the nations will come to you now i want you to notice something in this passage of scriptures you see the bible first talking about glory and he went on to now start talking about wealth now the topic was not changed it's still referring to the same thing just like i spoke extensively last week sunday if you miss it i would encourage you right to go watch it i explained what this means you see there is something called the law of first mention in scriptural interpretation anytime you see a word mentioned in the bible you need to check the first time in which that word was mentioned and most times when you see that word mentioned again in the bible it is referring to that first time in which it was mentioned you see when you see the word glory in the bible it is not always referring to uh, bright lights and maybe smoke <laughs> you know when people think about the glory of the lord they just think about the brightness of some lights you see but here the bible is referring to wealth when it's saying that darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people or better still the darkness shall cover the earth because it was referring to a specific darkness right it wasn't just talking about the darkness of the daytime and the night time it's talking about a particular dispensation that mankind was going to come into and there's going to be a lot of confusion people are not going to know the next step they're going to take you know people are going to be hopeless that is what the bible was referring to and that's why it says the darkness that's a definite article it says it will cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but the lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you you see because wealth is a byproduct of direction wealth is a byproduct of instruction followed and you see when the bible says the glory of the lord will rise upon you you see in verse 5 explain uh, uh, you see it being explained further in verse 5 that the abundant wealth of the seas will be brought to you and the wealth of the nations will come to you so that's what the bible was referring to 
is telling us that even when the whole world does not know the step to take, when they don't know the direction in which they need to go, when everyone is confused, that in that same season, you are going to be experiencing abundance. And I pray for everyone watching me right now that this is your season of abundance in the name of Jesus. Amen. That when everyone is going through insufficiency, you will have abundance. Amen. You will have more than enough to spend. Amen. You will have more than enough to save. Amen. You will have more than enough to put in store. Amen. You will have more than enough to give to others. Amen. You will have more than enough to be a blessing to the kingdom of God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, in the part of Nigeria where I come from, you know, the Yoruba land, there's this prayer I used to hear growing up. They will say that your hand will not touch, you know, the bottom, you know, translation now of your pocket. <laughs> that is, your money will not be expended. I pray for you today that money will meet money in your hands Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will get to a point in your life where insufficiency will become foreign to you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, it is very difficult to explain a laptop to someone that has never seen it before. It is very impossible or almost difficult to explain something to someone if they have never experienced it or experienced something close. And I pray for you that in the shortness of time, that time will come in your life where lack and insufficiency will become foreign to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, uh, that there are people I know that when they say they are broke, their definition of broke is seven figures. When they say, you know what, I'm broke, you know, uh, you know I'm, 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 I'm very broke, you know. They, ask, they still have like at least 1.5 million naira in their account. So when you talk to people like that and you say, you know what, I don't even have 500 naira in my account. They'll look at you like, are you kidding? How is that possible? My prayer for you is that you will rise to that level in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will bring you into the realm of abundance. Amen. The abundant wealth of the nations will come to you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we've highlighted there are basic things we need to note and pay attention to during financial tough times. We said number one, ensure you don't go into hustle mode. Don't go into hustle mode. You say hustling is a distraction from the main goal. Hustling is a distraction from the vision that God has given to you. When you see people that are hustling, one of the things you'll notice is that there is no precision. They are just doing this and that. They have a lottery mindset. Is it that this works or this or if this does not work, this one will work? You see, as a believer, when you want to go into something, you want to go into a business, you want to go into a relationship, you don't go into it with the mindset of is it that this works or it doesn't work? You see, I have the mantra. That anytime I want to do something, it is either it works or it works. I'm not going into something to find out whether it's going to work. I go into it because I already have an assurance from the spirit that this thing is going to work. And you say, that is how you should live your life. But you say, when you are hustling, you can't say that. When you are hustling, you are just trying to pick so many things and trying to find out which one works. And you say, when you are in an hustle mode, what happens is that you waste your resources. When you are in an hustle mode, what happens is that you waste your precious time. Time that you can never regain. So ensure that in a financial tough time, you see that the whole world is going through right now, and if you're also going through time um, through that right now, ensure you don't get sucked in into the hustle mode. Also, you need to understand that every generation is going to go through a financial crisis. It's going to go through a financial, you know, a tough time. And you should not see it as something strange or something foreign. And, you know, some people can even get into a state in a time and season like this where they begin to think that, oh, has God forgotten me? What is really happening? Why me? They begin to ask foolish questions. You say, when you ask foolish questions, you get foolish answers. The quality of questions you ask will determine the quality of answers you get. Years ago, a scientist was wondering, you know, sitting down under a tree and he was wondering, what is keeping the fruit hanging on the trees? You know, asking himself questions and he developed, you know, discovered the law of gravity because he was asking questions along that line. If you are asking, why me? You will get revelations of poverty. That's the only thing you will ever get. So you need to understand that it is, a, it, it is, it is as a result of the influence of the prince of the power of the air. As the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2, but I don't want to go too much into that because I already explained that deep, you know, enough last week Sunday. I also said last week Sunday that there is abundance everywhere. And you need to allow that to form your mindset. There is abundance everywhere. Scarcity is man-made. You see, what you seek is what you will find. If you are looking for abundance, you are going to find it. If you are looking for lack, you are going to find it. 
I remember reading the story of a particular girl who was on a voyage, you know, at sea. And they had exhausted all the drinking water they had on board the ship. So the guy went, you know, it, it, it stood that uh, I've forgotten the name that they, they call that, you know, the way you have cockpits, you know, in, in, in the airplane. The guy went to the particular place where he can see, you know, the water, the ocean, and he looked everywhere and he said, Oh, water everywhere, but there is none to drink. Water everywhere, but there is none to drink. Because you can't just scoop the water in the ocean, in the sea, and begin to drink it because it's salt water. It's not drinkable water. You see, in that same vein, you need to understand there is abundance everywhere. Even though it is not going to everyone, even though everyone is not experiencing it, but there is abundance everywhere. There is abundance everywhere. But I pray for you that in this season, the abundance of the earth will come to you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So all you need to do is to believe it, that there is abundance everywhere. Because what you believe is what you will become. What you believe is what you will become. If you believe there is lack everywhere, that is what you will experience. Because the Bible says the expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. You see, the Bible did not say the positive expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. It says the expectation. So if that expectation is positive or negative, it will still come into fulfillment. It's so unfortunate that sometimes the righteous expect negative things. And because God is a God of law and order, because he has put laws into place that you will of necessity experience what you expect. Even when you experience, uh, uh, expect negative things, that's what you're going to experience. So if the world is going through a financial tough time, right, and that is what you expect, that is what you're also going to experience. Hallelujah. Amen. We also mentioned the fact that you are not meant to just survive in a time and in a season like this. You are meant to thrive. You are meant to thrive. You are meant to try. To try this to do well. To survive is just to get by. To stay alive. But you say God wants you to do more than staying alive. God wants you to, you know, experience more than just getting by. God wants you to have an abundance in this season. And my prayer for you is that that will be your experience in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what are the practical steps you need to take, right, to do well in a financial tough time? What are the practical steps you need to take? Number one, get your emotions under control. Get your emotions under control. When you see people that are constantly being afraid, afraid of the future, afraid of what tomorrow is going to be like, it is because they have refused right, to possess their souls, to put their emotions in check. You see, even though fear is a feeling, but you need to understand that principally it is a spirit. Fear is a spirit that generates a feeling. And you say, every time you are afraid, have you ever asked yourself, about the things you were afraid of in times past. Have you noticed that most of the things you were afraid of in time past were things that never happened? Things that never happened. You say fear most times is a false evidence appearing as reality. Appearing real. Fear is a false evidence appearing real. Right? There are things that the devil presents to you and it is up to you to accept or to reject those things. So when you are going through a financial tough time, especially in a season like this where everyone, you know, is complaining, everyone is wondering what's going to happen, you know, in the coming weeks, in the coming months, you know, there are even some financial analysts who have said, you know, COVID's effect is going to reverberate for the next five years that is going to create a financial crisis and it's going to take five years to, for the world government you know to get out of it when you begin to hear those things ensure you don't allow it to you know gain entrance into your spirit because the things you hear and the things you see over time they are going to affect your emotions you see you cannot say you know i'm just hearing those things it has no effect on me it's not true it's a lie you see, faith comes by hearing and hearing again. Scripture tells us, Romans 10 and verse 17. And you see, what you hear is either going to feed your faith or it's going to feed your fear. It's going to feed your faith or it's going to feed your fears. So the question is, what have you been listening to? What you listen to is going to determine also the state of your emotions. So, if you're going to navigate successfully a financial tough time in which the world has found itself, the very first thing you need to do is get your emotions under control. Number two, exercise your authority as a believer, especially over your finances. Exercise your authority as a believer, especially over your finances. You see, 
a lot of people don't have this understanding that wealth is spiritual supplies right is a spiritual experience remember the bible says in luke 10 19 jesus said behold i've given you power to tread on snakes and scorpions he says and over all the power of the enemy not some but all not some not most but all he says and nothing shall by any means hurt you do you know poverty can hurt you do you know a financial tough time can hurt you and jesus is saying to us he says i've given you power that is authority to overcome the circumstances of life you know we already explained this extensively so i don't want to go deep into it you see anytime you see lack being perpetual there is an enemy at work because god created a world of abundance you see there is a difference between power and authority there is a difference now the purpose of this discourse is not to create that difference but you need to understand that authority is delegated power you see that authority you need to exercise is not something you need to work for it is something christ has already given to you earlier i mentioned the fact that there are certain things that jesus did for us on calvary's cross especially when he came to the earth there was a reason jesus came he didn't just came to give you a visa to heaven you know in a sense he also came to give you authority you see when god made man he gave him authority over the cosmos he gave him authority over the earth and everything within it it gave him the capacity the authority to dominate but you see one of the things man lost when man fell was that he lost that authority but jesus said in luke 10 19 it says behold i've given you power that is authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy do you see that it says and nothing shall by any means hurt you so you've got to exercise your authority as a believer you already have authority over the works of the enemy but you say authority not exercised will make you look as if you never had any authority in the first place don't watch things decay around you i've seen a lot of people when they are going through circumstances going through situations of life they just you know say things like whatever will be will be no whatever is going to be you must make it to be don't get into the case sera sera mode you know that whatever is going to happen is just going to happen you know some people even have a faulty mindset that says if god wants me to do well financially it's just going to make it happen where did you see that in the scriptures and we're still going to come to that you see god has given you authority he has given you the capacity to as it were chart the course of your life you can dictate the direction in which you want your life to go you see the tongue the bible tells us is like the rudder of a sheep even though it's a small member of the body but it has the capacity to dictate and to determine the direction in which a life would go when you look at you know the rudder of a sheep when you look at the cockpit you know even of of an airplane it looks small compared to the other parts of the airplane but in that cockpit everything the direction in which the you know plane the airplane is going to go and even the fate of everyone on board that aircraft is determined by what happens in that cockpit your authority is in your mouth your authority the authority god has given you the only way it can be released is through the words that you speak out of your mouth the bible tells us in genesis in the book of creation that you see when god wanted to bring the earth into existence god did not complain about the darkness he simply spoke into existence what he wanted to see if you are going to navigate this season successfully financially you must learn to declare the things you want to see mark eleven twenty three. the bible says you will have whatsoever you say you will have whatsoever you say you see the things you are currently seeing in your life right now they are a byproduct of the things you have said in the past the things you are going to see in the future will be the harvest of the sword seeds let me put it that way it will be the harvest of the word seeds that you are sowing today the problem oftentimes is people are expecting that i said something today it did not happen tomorrow it means it's not working no the way she say if the only thing you plant that grows overnight or almost overnight is a mushroom 
if you plant a cocoa seed it's not going to generate in the next 24 hours it's not going to start bringing forth fruit even in the next one year the quality of destiny that you want to experience right you must determine the kind of what seeds that you are sowing today so when the old world is going you know into a you know a frantic a, a you know a, a confused state people are wondering you know what's going to happen to me don't join them what you need to do is you need to begin to state declare proclaim confess the things that you want to see happen in your own life james 4 and verse 7 the bible says submit yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you how do you resist him through the words of your mouth when you see yourself going through a financial tough time you see and you see you see, one of the things you realize is that that is not god's plan for you as a believer if you are a student of the scripture and you see when you notice that this is happening consistently you've got to rebuke the devil you've got to tell him to take his hands off your finances i remember many years ago i was reading you know i can't remember the specific book but it was a book by kennedy e. Hagen, and he was talking about there was a time you know he was going through a financial crisis he would preach and he would notice that you know he was working he was serving god giving all his best to the work god has committed into his hands and nothing was happening proportionately especially in the area of finances and god told him you see there is no money coming from heaven You've got to tell the devil, even after you have tithed, you have given, you have engaged in all covenant practice, you must still tell the devil to take his hands off your finances. If you don't rebuke the devil, he's going to have a few day in your finances. You've got to rebuke him. You've got to rebuke him. You've got to put him in his place. And the only way to do that is through the words that you're speaking. If you keep quiet, things are going to get worse. Some people believe, you know, if I don't see anything, at least everything will just remain the same. The law of life, the very nature of our existence is this. Nothing is at a state of rest. Things are either getting better or they are getting worse. So if things are not getting better, you might be oblivious of it, but they are already getting worse. It's only a matter of time before it becomes revealed to you. So if your life is not getting better with every successive week, every successive month, every successive year, if there is nothing you can really point to and say, oh, this is the progress I've made. You know what? You're already retrogressing. You are moving backwards. You are not on the same spot. Because over time, life is going to prove to you when others keep moving, it will now become apparent that you've actually been left behind. So you've got to exercise your authority in the area of your finances in a season like this. Don't just watch things happen. Make them happen. Make them happen. Create what you want to see. Create them with the words of your mouth. Job 22 and verse 29. It says, when men are cast down, you will say, <laughs> there is a lifting up. When people are cast down, you don't wait until you are also cast down before you start speaking the direction in which you want to go into existence. The Bible didn't say when you are cast down. It said when men are cast down, you will say. That is when you see that this is already becoming a global thing. Everyone is going through a financial crisis. Companies are going bankrupt. Businesses are folding up stores. You know, are closing up shop. You don't wait to experience it before you start saying what you want to see. In that same place when you start hearing the news you don't go into a panic mode what you do what you do in that kind of a state is you begin to say what god has said in his word my needs are met my bills are paid hallelujah the lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory those are the things you begin to say i have an i have an abundance of resources i live a life of superior quality a life of excessive quantity i wear the best i drive the best i live in the best part of this city whatever city you're living in the abundance of the sea comes to me the wealth of the nations gravitate towards me i experience favor in the marketplace those are the things you say you don't say things like you know when everybody is saying you know there is no customer you know nobody who told you people are not buying things in this season who told you that people are engaged in commerce the fact that they have not come to you doesn't mean they are not going somewhere else and so you've got to open your mouth and create the future you want to see is somebody getting what i'm saying this morning yes, sir. hallelujah Amen. so please know this the same way God does not make people sick, He does not make people poor. <laughs> it's not responsible for lack and insufficiency. It's not. You know, some people believe in certain circles that God, you know, makes you sick to teach you a lesson. 
I had recently the story of a lady who believes that you know in your sickness God receives the glory and you know she you know I don't know who, who teaches all those rubbish and she got to a point she started praying that God should give her cancer she eventually died of leukemia now was it God that answered her prayer no the devil also answers prayers in case you don't know the devil answers prayers and that's why sometimes you need to be careful of the things you say you need to be careful of the things you say because in the realm of the spirit there is no understanding of the comic industry you can't say before the angel what i've said is an error the bible tells us that so number one put your emotions in control number two exercise your authority number three accept the blame and responsibility for your financial status if you're going to navigate this season successfully you must accept responsibility for your financial status <laughs> Other people's success is not the reason for your failure. If they were not successful, if they are a failure, you will still fail. The earlier people understand that in this part of the world, the better. Especially in Africa, where people believe in collective success. When someone succeeds in the midst of failure, they say, ah, we have succeeded. No, that person succeeded. It is not a we thing. Except if you had an impute in that success. It's only in Africa, you know, where people believe that they are entitled to the achievement of another person. If you didn't have any impute in it, you have no entitlement. Nobody is responsible, you see. Wherever you are today financially is of your own making. You either consciously created it or you consciously accepted it. A dear man of God said many years ago, and I believe it. He said, if you fail, it is your fault. If you succeed, it is your choice. If you fail... It is your choice. If you succeed, it is your fault. You see, I've come to understand something. If you succeed, it is your choice. I've come to understand something. You will never improve something you have not accepted responsibility for. I'm going to say that again. That's tweetable, right? <laughs> you will never improve on something that you have not accepted responsibility for. The Bible tells us about a man by the name of Jephthah. Oh, how I love Jephthah so much. Judges 12 and verse 3. Jephthah said, When I saw that you did not deliver me, I took my life in my hands. That is, I accepted responsibility for my destiny. The reason why many people are going through financial quagmires, financial you know, insufficiency, is because they keep expecting someone to get them out of their financial states. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Financial freedom is the responsibility of the adult life. If you're an adult and you are watching this right now, you are responsible for your financial destiny. You are responsible for, the, for, for your financial fate. As in F-A-T-E. Not F-A-I-T-H. F-A-T-E. Your financial fate is your responsibility. You are the reason you are in a financial mess. You, are, you either accepted it, or you created it. You see, financially successful people accept the blame and responsibility for the things that happen in their life. They know that they are the ones at fault. And when you look at people who are financially successful, you see one of the things they say is, it's up to me. It's up to me. The box stops at my table. But people will fail over and over again, especially in financial matters. They blame every other person. So, oh, the reason why I'm not doing financially well is because of the government. Oh, it's because of coronavirus. You see, the things you have no control over can never be the reason for your failure. I'm going to say that again. You see, in life, there are things you can control. There are things you cannot control. You cannot control the virus, except if you are a scientist and you can come up with a vaccine. You cannot control gravity. You can't control the weather. But you know what? You can control your response to it. And that's why the very first step you need to take is you need to put your emotions under control. You can do something. When you take your eyes off the things you cannot do, or when you take your eyes, as it were, off the things you can do and put it on the things you cannot do anything about, you're going to become frustrated. And that's what happens to the people, you know, who, 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 who find it difficult to thrive in a financial tough season. They keep putting their attention on things they cannot control. They are putting their attention on the government, putting their attention on their president, putting their attention on one rich uncle that has refused to help them, you know, putting attention 
maybe on their faith community that has refused to give them welfare, putting attention on maybe their local government chairman that has not distributed palliative to their doorstep. Keep blaming every, blame the system, blame everything. The more you blame others, the more irresponsible you become. You can't accept responsibility and be blaming people at the same time. No. The people who have responsibility for the outcomes of their lives are people who don't blame. They don't pass the blame. You see, I strongly believe the reason why man lost Eden was not even because man failed. It was because man did not accept responsibility. When God showed up in the garden, what if Adam had said, Oh God, I'm sorry, we did this, I accept responsibility. When God said, What have you done? You know what he did? He said, Ah, is the woman. God spoke to the woman. He said, Ah, is the serpent. The serpent must have looked behind him. There's nobody to blame. So he said, Go answer. <laughs> nobody to blame. What if he had accepted responsibility? Probably mankind won't be in the state in which it is right now. But he passed the responsibility. He, he refused to accept responsibility. He passed the blame. And as a result of that, he lost the garden. Could it be that the reason why you are losing things is because you have refused to accept responsibility? Could it be? Could it be the reason why you are losing those clients, losing those jobs, losing those opportunities, losing those relationships? It's because you have refused to accept responsibility for your life. I've come to understand something about successful people. They don't allow people in their space who don't accept responsibility for their life because you know what people who don't accept responsibility over time they will see you as the reason for their misfortune as a matter of fact over time when you allow them long enough into your space they become entitled to your achievements and when you don't make them a partaker of what you have labored for they become resentful number four prioritize the leadership of the holy spirit and this is where i'm going to be rounding up this morning prioritize the leadership of the holy spirit you know i discovered something interesting in the scriptures a while back the bible tells us about a particular man called elimelech in the book of ruth elimelech took his family during a financial tough time he took his wife his two sons took them to the land of moab left bethlehem and the bible refers to bethlehem as the place of bread that is the place of provision the place of abundance but there was a famine in the land the country was going through a financial tough time economically everything wasn't working so you know what this guy did he moved his family i'm sure he didn't ask the holy spirit because if he asked god what happened at the end of the day wouldn't have happened because what happened was he eventually died in the land of moab his first son died his second son died and the only person that was left was his wife naomi so elimelech took his wife uh, um, naomi took his two sons went into that city and lost everything eventually when naomi was going to leave moab to go back to bethlehem what happened was she went empty-handed and the amazing thing was everyone they left in bethlehem they had moved on so before you take that step before you go on that journey I'm not against people relocating. I'm not against people traveling. But the question is, are you being led by the Spirit of God? Can you really say you are being led by the Spirit of God? Guess what? God relocates people. God had to relocate jo Joseph from his father's house, from Canaan to Egypt. And he became the prime minister. So it is scriptural to relocate as long as you are being led by the Spirit of God. But this is where I'm going. Eventually, Naomi's daughter-in-law by the name of Ruth, got married to a man by the name of boaz in bethlehem now the thing is this did you know that boaz and elimelech were cousins <laughs> elimelech left because of a financial tough time boaz stayed behind and boaz is the only man referred to in the bible as a mighty man of wealth the only man not even solomon study the bible you see it there so what differentiated Boaz and Elimelech was the leadership of the divine. Boaz could have also left Bethlehem when Elimelech, his cousin, left Bethlehem. But you know what? He was not instructed to leave. <laughs> and you see, when Naomi came back with Ruth, Ruth went to glean from the field of the man that stayed 
within God's provisions. And so don't allow yourself to just move out of your place. Of the place where God has positioned you. Don't move out of that business because you are going through a financial tough time. Don't change careers because you are going through a financial tough time. As believers, we are led by the Spirit, not by paychecks. When some people want to get a job, they look for the job that has, that is high player, you know, that has the highest paycheck. You don't do that as a believer. You pick a job because the Holy Spirit is instructing you to pick that particular job. Look at Isaac. Isaac is another classic example. God relocated Abraham out of the awe of childish. So, it was just normal for Isaac to think, oh, when things are not working, just move. So, you know what he did? During his own time, when there was famine, the Bible says that Isaac was going to go down to Egypt like his father. And God said, no, 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 no. You're going to stay here. Thank God for hearing ears. What if he was spiritually deaf that he could not hear? So, it's one thing for the covenant to have made provisions for your supplies. It's another thing for your ears to be open to hear the instructions of the Holy Spirit to where your provision is. And the Bible tell us, tells us in Genesis 26, right, that Isaac sowed in that same land where things were not working for others. And in that same year, he reaped a hundredfold. So if you're going to navigate this season, a financial tough time, if you're going to navigate this season successfully, you need to prioritize the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Before you take any step, you need to ask God, what do I need to do in this place? What step do you want me to take? Where do you want, to put, where do you want me to put my money? What business do you want me to take? Instead of hustling, you know, selling boiling water, <laughs> selling so many things. Because, oh yeah, then, yeah, you can meet a need. If a need is available, meet it. But most importantly, prioritize the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 45 and verse 3, the Bible says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, which called thee by name, am the God of Israel. Did you see that? Treasures of darkness. <laughs> hidden riches of secret places. You said something is hidden. It is now in a secret place. How do you find it? Only by the leadership of the Spirit. And that's what the Bible also says in Isaiah 48 and verse 17. It says, Thus says the Lord thy Redeemer, the only one of Israel. It says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. It simply means the leadership of the divine and profit and go hand in hand. They work in tandem. If you're going to experience profiting, you have to be led by the Spirit of God. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. As I begin to round up, you see, understand this. When the world is going in a particular direction, go in the direction of the Spirit. I'm going to say that again. When the world is going in a particular direction, always go in the direction of the Spirit. Don't have a hard mentality. Don't have a hard mentality. Don't follow the crowd to do things. Don't do things because everyone is doing it. Do it based on understanding. Do it because you are led by the Spirit of God. And so how does God lead us through His, you know, how does the Holy Spirit lead us? How does He speak to us? How is He going to guide you in this season? Number one is through the written word. Through the written word. Hebrews chapter 1, you know, verse 1, the Bible says, God who has sundered times, you know, and in diverse manner spoke to us by the fathers and by the prophet. He said He has in this day spoken to us by His Son by his son and we know that his son is the word because the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was you know with god and the word was god you know so jesus or the word is jesus in print so you can't separate the leadership of the spirit as it were from the written word from the written word god can never lead you to do something that is against his word no he's not going to do that the second thing you need to understand about the leadership of the spirit, how God is going to lead you, is going to lead you through the inward witness. You will just have that knowing, especially if you are a person of his presence. If you spend time fellowshipping with him, you know, spend time in the world, spend time in prayers, there are things you will just know. You might not be able to ex uh, explain it, but that knowing will just come. And now you will know it's the leadership of the Holy Spirit is that it will come with peace. The peace of God will, will flood your heart. And you will just know, this is the step I need to take. And the last way, not, not the, you know, the, the last way I want to mention today, not the, you know, exhaustive, it's not exhaustive, right, is the prophetic voice. The prophetic voice. 
the prophetic voice. God is going to lead you through the voice of your pastor. It's going to lead you through the voice. You see, the voice of your pastor, the voice of your prophet, the word, you see, a prophet is the one that God has sent to you and that you have received. A prophet is not someone that is sent to everyone generically. No. You might have a pastor, but it's not your prophet because we have not received the word from his mouth as God's word to you. You just, you see, you can receive a pastor as a teacher. You can receive him as a life coach. You know, there are many life coaches today. You can even receive him as a counselor. You can receive him as a motivational speaker. And those who receive a prophet in the name of a motivational speaker will receive inspiration. But those who receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, the Bible says they will receive a prophet's reward. How do I know that God will lead you through the voice of your pastor, through the voice of his prophet to you? The Bible tells us that when God was going to speak to Samuel, he had the voice of Eli. God will always speak to you through a voice you are familiar with. Especially the voice of your pastor. In this season, let the prophetic voice be louder in your life than the voice of the media. Let the prophetic voice be louder in your life than the voice of celebrities. Let the voice of your prophet, let it be louder in your life than the voice of circumstances. Let it be louder than the voice of statistics. Especially the COVID statistics. Let it be louder. Let the voice of the written word be louder. Let the word of the inward witness be louder. Let the word of your prophet, let it be louder to you in this season. And you know how the voice is going to become louder when you consistently expose yourself to it. My prayer for you today is that your ears will become open ears and your eyes will become seen eyes Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the remaining days of this month and this year, you will know what to do. Amen. You will know the steps to take. Amen. You will not be confused. Amen. In every area of confusion, I speak clarity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In every area of confusion, I speak direction. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the remaining days of this month, you will record profits. Amen. Profit on the job. Amen. Profit in business. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will go in the right direction. Amen. This month, you will take steps that will result into your lifting. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every step you take will lead to increase. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In your life, in your business, in your finance, in your family, there shall be no loss. Amen. No loss of life. Amen. No loss of resources. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This week your hands will be strengthened. Amen. This week all that will be your steps. Amen. The favor of God will come upon you like never before. Amen. Everyone that sees you will favor you. Amen. Everyone that sees you will help you. Amen. This week you will not be stranded. Amen. You will be aided. Amen. You will be assisted Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. As I've said it so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you believe it come and celebrate the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> So I don't want to bring this to an end. We don't want to close today's service without giving someone an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. It is one thing to know of God is another thing to come into fellowship with him. The best decision you can ever make in your life is to receive Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. So if you're saying, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come to you today. I come to you today. With a heart of penitence. With the heart of penitence. I acknowledge, I acknowledge that, I'm a sinner, that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe you came to the earth, you, came to you the died earth. on the cross, you, died on the you cross. rose on the third day, you rose on the and you are now seated and you are now at the right hand of the Father. The right hand of Jesus, the Father. Jesus, I come to you today. I, come to you today. I, ask, I ask that you forgive me that you forgive of, my sins, of my sins, that you redeem me that you redeem of, my past, of my past, that you restore, that you restore my, future my future into what into you, have you have ordained it to be. To be. Wash, me clean Wash me clean of my past. Of my Past. Give me a brand new future. Brand new from, future. Today, from today, I acknowledge, I acknowledge that, you are Lord that you are Lord and Savior, and Savior over, my life. over my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. name. Amen. If you Amen. said that prayer, I want to say congratulations. I want to say welcome to the family of God. That is the best decision you can ever make in your life. And if you're just making that decision, I want you to send me a message. We'd like to hear from you. Send me an email at thegatewayng right at gmail.com. The Gateway NG at gmail.com i'd like to hear from you and would like to give you the resources that will enable you to grow and you know develop spiritually and you say one of the decisions you can make that will enable you to grow is to ensure 
that you connect to a spiritual family every child needs a family to grow proportionately to grow appropriately as it were right so you also need to spend time in god's word to know the mind of god to know the thoughts of god so i'd encourage you to get a bible you know start from the new testament right especially right from uh, uh, the letters to the church for you to di- to discover the plans that god has for you amen so it is time to worship god with our seed with our givings right giving is a part of our worship giving is a requirement of the christian faith right it is it is something right that cannot be separated from the christian faith tithing is a covenant responsibility it's not something we do out of obligation it is something we do out of a sense of privilege that out of that which god has blessed me with i've brought this back even to honor him right so if you want to give your tithe you want to give your offering worship offering right now i would encourage you right to use the details on the screen and you have your list listening on audio right through the mixlr app i'd encourage you you know the details is this you know the name of the bank is gt bank guaranteed trust bank the account name is the gateway house of god international and the account number is zero two one triple seven that is seven 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 three two eight six i'm gonna take that again the name of the bank is guaranteed trust bank that is gt bank the account name is the gateway house of god international and the account number is zero two one seven 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 three two eight six father in the name of jesus we thank you for everyone bringing their tithe bringing their offering their partnership pledge in honor of your name and the worship of your name today we thank you for that which you have blessed them with thank and you. father we decree and declare that today this is the least your people will ever be Amen. we decree and declare that the devourer is rebuilt for the sake of your people Amen. the devourer is rebuilt over their finances Amen. rebuilt over their family Amen. rebuilt over the works of their hands Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. i decree and declare that this is the least you will ever be Amen. i decree and declare that from this day increase on every side Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. your ends are blessed Amen. your bank account is blessed Amen. your investments are yielding Amen. results Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. we thank you father for answered prayers thank you, in Lord. jesus name we have prayed Amen. 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 So if you're just joining us for the very first time and you are wondering, you know, who is this? You know, what's this about? My name is Akintola Samuel. I'm the senior pastor of the Gateway Church. I want to say thank you for being a part, right, of today's Sunday online experience. The Gateway Church exists, right, to raise fully devoted followers of Christ to become significant in life and in the marketplace. We'd like to be your friend. We'd like to reach out to you, right? So if today is your first time of experiencing the Gateway, you know, service online i would encourage you to type yes in the comment section right we'll get across to you and we'll pick it up from there thank you very much for joining us today and remember to share today's service if you haven't shared it ensure you do that and i pray that this week you will record outstanding testimonies in the name of jesus Amen. see you on wednesday god bless you let's take a closing chat together one to god and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which which is able able to to build you up and to give you an inheritance amongst them which are sanctified now i want you to personalize this i commend myself to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build me up and to give me my inheritance amongst them which are sanctified amen have a wonderful day god bless you